What is up, Need for Speed Racers? It is I, your wheelman, Alex Cornut. We're here today with the Jaguar F-Type R convertible. Drop top just for you. You guys requested this in my last video. It got the most likes by far. I've been sitting on this car all weekend, but under the circumstances with April Fools and everything else under the sun, I wasn't gonna release it and confuse anybody. So that being said, it's here today. Start off our Monday right. It's really pretty good. I've got some crazy gameplay footage at the end of this. I run the endurance race and take a jump in this car that's not even supposed to exist and really get a three bar of airtime. It's insane, insane. Car's pretty good. It is on par with the other cars in S-Class. So it's right there with the R34, right there with the R35, holds pace with the Ford GT, some of the other Lamborghinis. I mean, it's mid right with everybody else so if you are wanting to run the jag this is the build it's a good grip build i like it a lot i really am enjoying these builds for you guys because it's putting me in cars that i typically wouldn't come back to but if that's what you want to see that's what i want to bring to you so let's dig in stay tuned for the gameplay footage drop a comment below what you want to see if you want me to build something comment on it whatever comment gets the most likes is the next car that i'm going to build I'm enjoying this series. It was kind of sporadic how it came to be, but at the end of the day, I think you guys are liking it too. I'm getting a lot of participation in the comments. So like your comment after you put it there. Go find at least one other person that put a different car other than yours and like theirs as well. So that way there's, you know, not just a landslide on one car. I want to see multiple people upvoting everybody else's cars. Share the love, you guys. Because at the end of the day, I'm probably going to end up building every car in the stinking game, and I'm happy with that. So let's do it. But you guys decide the order, right? Let's dig into the build. For the engine you're running on this one, there are two 5.0 liter V8s. We are running the second one. It is the 435 brake horsepower 5.0 V8. It is the sport bronze engine. The second engine, don't accidentally build on the first one. The 585 is not the one you want. You wanna do the 435, so make sure you get that engine, you guys. For the parts, you are running Silver Pro Induction. You are running Elite Platinum ECU. You're running Super Gold Fuel System. Super Gold Exhaust. Elite Platinum Roots Supercharger. I tried it with everything, every configuration in this car I could come up with. The Roots and the Screw were the two best ones and the Roots slots in a little bit better with the PI values and the performance parts. So we were able to get the most out of it overall with the Roots. So that's what we went with. The car does really well. It's right where you want it to be. The car will do about 208, 209. Uh, it does take a little while to get there, but it does hit it. So it's fast, it's plenty fast. You are running Sport Bronze Nitrous. Elite Platinum Road Suspension. Silver Pro Brakes. Elite Platinum Road Tires not the grips run the roads i found that in longer races for the endurance tracks the road tires helped overall in some of the straightaways the car doesn't really have a problem with grip and with micro drifting i found that i was able to get more boost with the road tires so you can try it with the grip tires if you want you can sub those two out it's a straight swap doesn't change any pi values so if you're really used to running the grips and you find that the roads aren't grippy enough for you you might try that but i had more success when i went to the road tires with some of the testing that i did so just be aware of that you guys but you can run either one of those so just go whatever you feel i i'm leaning into the roads a little more for the clutch you are running a sport bronze clutch transmission is the pro silver six speed transmission differential elite platinum diff you've got to run the elite platinum diff if you want to take it all the way to 100 percent grip so we're full beyonce on this one you guys and for the nitrous auxiliaries, I run nitrous drift and nitrous grip, as I always do. For the handling, 100% to the left, full Beyonce, 100% grip. Steering sensitivity, I'm two clicks high. You guys see that all the time. Run whatever you like. Downforce, all the way low. I gave this car as much advantage on the top end as I could because that's really the only spot it suffers. It does good on acceleration, does good on launch, does good coming out of corners, but like the top end when you get to about 180 plus, it kind of backs off a little bit. So 
low downforce was helpful. This car is very downforce sensitive. We talked about that with the Pagani. We've talked about that with like the Ford GT, some of the other cars. This is one of those. You don't see it so much at S class, okay? So like you'll move the slider, it's only about three or four points. But in A plus class, when I was testing to see if it wanted to slot there, you would get 15 points of swing between high downforce and low downforce. And so taking that knowledge and then applying it to the S build, running it all the way low really helped out a lot on the top end. Like it, it really changed the car on the top speed. So I would recommend definitely low downforce on this one, you guys. It doesn't struggle with grip. It hooks up pretty well. That's why I'm even running the road tires. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your build, but just know that I did test it on both ends and I really got a lot of data from the A plus build and then carried that over to the S class to give you the best car. Traction control off, drift entry, brake tap. That is going to give you the Jaguar F-Type R convertible. 206 top speed, 861 for the horsepower, 744 for the max torque. The car is really pretty solid. Check out the gameplay footage. There's definitely nothing wrong with this thing. It holds its own. I had no problem winning lots of races in it. I rather like the car. It looks really good. Sounds really good. It's pretty solid. And I'm having a lot of fun building your guys' requests. So keep those coming, you guys. I think we've got a good thing going here. And so I'd like to continue that. Drop a comment down below, and while you're commenting and liking your own stuff and liking other people's stuff, like the video, please. Gets it in front of more people, and we're having a lot of success. We're growing, you guys. I just hit half a million views on my YouTube channel, you guys. For a lot of content creators, that's a thing of the past, but for me, like that is a milestone, I think. I mean, I've half a million, that's 500,000 total views on my channel. I think that's really special. I've only been doing this since December, essentially, so four months in and we're really banging on all cylinders so i i'm excited for the future you guys are helping me grow and i'm very thankful for that so comment below like other people's comment guys if you drop a comment i want you to like at least one other person's please share the love down there and like the video we'll see you next time have a great rest of your day bye bye all right race one the hustle this is a pretty good one because we get a chance to see how this car stacks up in a regular acceleration race. We got a Pista, we got an R34, we got the 4 GT. I mean, we're stacked here, and there's a lot of different cars, and I really like that. Um, one poor bastard in a rental, so, you know, <laughs> that guy's going to be in rough shape. But the rest of us are doing good. Getting a good launch, trying to tuck him behind this guy, get that draft, get that boost going. There's that 4 GT. So overall, this car doesn't do too bad, but... It's not going to walk anybody, so you're kind of in the same boat as everybody else as far as acceleration goes. The 4GT's got a little longer legs than us. He's interacting with traffic in ways that's a little scary. Now from here on out, I'm going to start building boost and not really using it because I'm going to save it for the upcoming corner. So we get a little bit of a micro drift right there. I'm trying to get that 3 bar up. Now you'll see me kind of just milk that 3 bar, do a little bit of a turn there. And I go into this, and I started drifting just slightly before I hit the boost, so instead of grip turning, we actually slid out. So now, we're going to get the oncoming near misses there. We're going to use our boost a little early, but we got to do it to keep up with Pro Beast here, so that way we can stay in his draft. It is a outright sprint race. It's me and Pro Beast. We're gaming. We're out here going real hard. And right behind him is uh, Mini Hand. So he's the guy in the Ford GT. I mean, it's it's good. Like we're we're actually giving it a real race here. Uh, guys that are a little more on the pro side of the driver mod, I would recommend maybe running some of these off-meta cars. It's going to give you some really good racing for sure. I I really liking running cars that are not super meta because it brings that skill gap a little closer together because you're kind of gimping yourself by running a slower car. So running guys that are in little faster cars like that, it's uh, kind of more of an even match, and I'm really enjoying that quite a lot. The micro drift there, gonna use our boost up the hill. We're gonna try to get another little micro drift, and you'll see that I'm just tapping the brake and turning just a little bit, and we're gonna use the three bar down the hill, and then that allows us to get maximum speed, and we really put a big gap on those guys. So because we saved our resources for that open straightaway, it allowed us to eke out, you know, a couple hundred yards and really take that W. As we progress, the races get spicier and spicier. Blue Collar, definitely a one that everyone knows quite well. It's really not a bad track. It's not my favorite track, but it's a kind of a golden standard by seeing how your car stacks up. So I usually would say anything sub 210 is 
the car is decent. Not necessarily meta. You gotta be going sub two to have a meta car, but sub two ten shows that the car has got the ability to turn and accelerate. We get that perfect start. Our man right here is in the Lotus. He knows what's good, sorta. I don't know. I think the Lotus and S class is a little underpowered. I think it would really fit a lot better at A plus. That being said, he's gonna drift around the outside, use our boost on the exit. We're sitting here gaming. I mean. This car doesn't break away with people like the F40 or the Skyline does, so you're going to be fighting for your Ws, especially in traffic. But look at the gap we've got here. I mean, fifth place is only 100 yards behind us, and the other guys are between that, so keeping it real close going in here, and I like that. Now, you'll see me just kind of do a little micro drift right there to get the three bar, three bar Tron turn around, get a nice big grip corner. That worked out quite well. I'm a little chapped that it didn't give me my boost, but that's okay. We're not trying to set any crazy times, we're just trying to have good, consistent, clean runs, and do well and win the Jag is a pretty good car overall it grips well it doesn't consistently Tron turn so if you hit the boost and then tap the d-brake to get a really tight corner sometimes it'll drift on you sometimes it'll hook like really really insane so it'll take a little getting used to for you guys if you want to drive this but overall it is it is pretty fair it's uh, it's on par with a lot of the other S-Class cars that are kind of mid-tier, and so I have no problem uh, showcasing this build and being pretty happy with it. It sounds really good, and it looks really good. British engineering at its finest, so definitely nothing wrong with that. So we're gonna use our boost there. I really expected it to turn a lot sharper when I hit the boost, so that's kind of why we went wide. I didn't expect to go like that. And then we'll use it here, do a little bit of a Tron turn, and it turns really sharp. So there is some inconsistencies, that'll take a little getting used to, I think, for you guys if you're driving this car, but overall it's alright. So, get a micro drift there, we've got our 2 bar, gonna milk that into a 3 bar, and then I'm gonna carry that until we get down to this bottom corner. And so, like I said, inconsistent, sometimes it goes wide, sometimes it goes real sharp. Right there, we do a really sharp turn, get elevated, and we do like a glide through that corner. I think we only had one wheel touch on the ground. Because of that, we lose a ton of speed, or lost a ton of speed, excuse me. And so we come in at about a 212. So overall, I think with a clean run, this car could probably do a 208, maybe a little better. But under the circumstances, a 212 gives you an idea where it stacks up. It's not bad. And it, it holds its own against the GT, the Skyline, you know, the Amira. So it's definitely not a bad car at all. Get high tonight. This track is... Very tricky, there's a couple of spots where there is a lot of finesse involved, but if you can hook the corners, uh, you can set yourself up for some lines that don't really have much other players on it, and so you kind of got the track to yourself. I like that. We launch the car in third gear as we do. Watch the RPMs. It'll get the boost, it'll come all the way up, bounce, and then it'll fall down, and then we shift into fourth. And so it's not just shifting early, you want to make sure that the car actually settles before you click that next gear. For you automatic players, just always make sure you are getting a perfect start always get a perfect start make sure you work on that you guys if you're not getting perfect starts work on that <laughs> so typically a lot of guys use boost through there i'm saving the three bar because i want to go into this corner i set up on the left hand side because i want to have as much traction on the concrete as possible the car hooks crazy and so we go even a little sharper than i normally would but it sets us up for a straight line through the grass to hit that checkpoint i do like that going through here we're just making the most use of our boost as possible. You see that I try to save it for this corner so that way I can do a little Tron turn right here. Barely clip the checkpoint. <laughs> this car hooks really sharp, so I wasn't quite ready for that, but we were lucky, got the checkpoint, that's cool. Gonna save our three bar for the exit of this corner right there and start working our way up to our maximum speed. Using all of our NOS, all of our boost down the hill. Gonna have that gas station at the bottom that we know, so use our resources so that way when we go through the gas station we can top up our nose right there and then be able to get up to full speed our opponent goes around us clips the car i like to stay right here on the left because you can then get up in the dirt and kind of just straddle the pavement and that allows you to be really safe cutting through here avoiding all trees at all costs got a good line there got a little airborne but stayed on a lot of the pavement and now we're pretty much gone we've left our opponents in the dust we've got 500 yards on them easy Chaining that section together really clean and not making any mistakes is the uh, way to go for sure in this car. Almost had three bars, not quite enough, so we're just using our resources, using the boost and the NOS. This is a very long straightaway, it comes up to the finish, so you want to use all of that early on to get your car up to momentum. Other than that, it's a pretty clean run. I'd say anything sub two minutes on this track is pretty fair. 
Not record setting by any means, but sub two is pretty decent. The scenic route. This endurance race is a lot of fun. I think it's probably one of the better ways to test a car in the S class because you're allowed to really see how it does in straightaways, how it does overall. I mean, there's a lot of corners you got to chain together, and so getting a clean run is difficult, but it'll tell you a lot about your car based on what kind of times you can do and if you do get a clean run. We launch in third, wait for it to settle, shift into fourth. You'll see me do a couple techniques here. I really try to carry a lot of boost later on in the game, uh, the race, and I want you guys to see that, that you can keep the boost for your corners. You don't have to use it right away. So here we get a nice little grip turn, get that boost, save it for this corner, and then I use it midway through the corner there to get a nice sharp turn and then stay on the road. It's super easy to go wide back there and then get involved with parked cars, trees, and buildings. So just be aware of that. Going down this road, you want to really try to be looking up the street as far as you can see. And then cresting this hill, be very careful for traffic on either side. There's an intersection up here coming up. Traffic very rarely stops there. And so be aware of that. As we crest this hill, we're going to have a, almost two bars here, a little micro drift there. Another little micro drift here. I'm carrying and chaining this boost together. Cool. Now I'm at three bars. Look how long I keep those three bars. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. <laughs> I'm waiting for this corner here. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting until I get here. And then using it on the exit of this corner. We had three bar for like 10 seconds there or longer. And I was very, very patient with it. And you'll see I'm doing those little twitches with a little bit of... Um, brake tap just to get that three bar back up so that's a technique you guys might want to work on is saving that boost for the corner so that way you can maximize your exit just because you've got it doesn't mean you have to use it and so saving patience now watch this line super sharp Tron turn to the biggest jump I've ever done off of that rock get another three bar and land and then use it to accelerate out let me just show you guys that one more time because it's crazy coming down the hill here I've got my three bar, I'm going to use it to turn really sharp, turn way too sharp, go off the rocks, somehow avoid the trees, <laughs> get about four seconds of air time, use that three bar and then accelerate down the hill like it's all part of the plan. <laughs> Definitely a degen line there you guys. I've never done that, I don't know that I'll ever be able to do it again, so it was really fun that I was able to get that on gameplay footage and still win the race, <laughs> like let's go. Carrying the speed through there, getting the near misses, waiting to use that three bar, then using that with all of our NOS to get as much speed as possible and carry that through that section. Taking this corner really sharp, using lots of brakes, making sure we do not interact with missing that checkpoint. Coming through this zone, just avoiding traffic, staying to the right sides really clean because there's that opening there. It's kind of the same way going the opposite direction on get high tonight. So it's you want to stay on the right hand side, there's more room for you. That corner's dangerous, you really can't see up the hill too much, so just try to be cautious, maybe toe the center line a little bit. Now here, I get a little overzealous. I hit our three bar on early, and then get another one there, then use that and turn a little sharper than I would have liked, but still not bad, lines us up for that. But for whatever reason, it didn't chain it together, so we're going through this section pretty dry, not a lot of boost. Get a micro drift here. Use it immediately, and that's going to give us another three bar after that. And I'll use it immediately here, get a nice tight corner. Using boost in the corners is the way to go, you guys. I don't even really touch the brakes through there. It's all just tapping the boost, tapping the handbrake once, turning the car, and accelerating. It's a good technique. It allows us to really get quite a lead. I mean, we're pushing a thousand yards on our opponents now, 2,000 in some cases. So if you run this track clean, even with a crazy jump, you can do quite well. Very degen there, but it lined us right up for the checkpoint, so it wasn't too bad. This corner, you got to be careful. Sometimes there's traffic tucked right here, and it's really easy to interact with them and crash into it. This corner, you want to take real sharp, go up on the dirt, make a nice apex, and then line yourself up for that checkpoint. That's definitely the way to go. Coming around this corner here. It's really important that you're using boost and saving it for the uphill portion because you will actually lose a good amount of speed up this hill. So if you can use it right there and use it up the hill, you'll carry more momentum and that's good. That's the only crash that I actually interact with traffic this whole race. Pretty easy to do. We would have had a decent run had I not done that. But keep in mind, you guys, 
um, the guys that are running meta cars and trying to hunt times are already done. <laughs> so us uh, trying to get, you know, anything 430 or better is not bad, but real talk, um, <laughs> 410s is kind of where these guys are hunting right now, and it's uh, pretty unreasonable. Overall, we come across the finish line, we're about 440, so it's okay, it holds up. With a crash, that's not bad, especially with that big jump. We lost time on that too, but you see that if you run a non-meta car and keep pretty clean the whole time, you will borderline DNF most of your opponents. Them adding extra seconds to the end of the race really helps a lot of people because most of those guys would have been DNF'd. Snooty comes in, and so does BTJC. Pro B slides in there, but the rest of the guys, uh, they're going to just have to take, uh, take an L and not finish there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.